Lilith has entered the ancient city. With your blessing, I can pursue her. Your kind are weak, and this world has been wasted on the crusades of the unworthy. I can stop her. This is the story of Diablo 4, Act 1, Episode 3. Meeting the angel Inarius and exploring whether he's a tyrannical father or benevolent patriarch. Attempting to intercept Lilith before she could locate her firstborn Rathma, the patron of our order of necromancers, we find our path barred by a black lake and Nairel's mother, who we were forced to fell. We then learn the lake can only be crossed with a divine blessing, and thus return to the Church of Light in Kyovashad for guidance, finding Yosef by the altar. See that the kitchen is ready for the morrow's service. Angels above, you've returned! We explain. I need a holy blessing to continue chasing Lilith. The Reverend Mother will want to hear of this, but she's away at Corvalar. Seek your blessing there. Everything is unfolding as Inarius foretold. Soon, he will be free to escape sanctuary and return to the heavens where he belongs. Before leaving, we inquire. What do you know of Reverend Mother Prava? As a girl, she was sick, plagued by constant seizures. But Enarius healed her. When I met her, I was a sinner. But her faith showed me what I could be. There's no one better fit to lead us. What is Korvala? One of our defenses against the prime evils. We fight terror with faith, hatred with compassion. We've built the mighty towers at Corvelar to withstand destruction. And Anarius foretold this. He was given a prophecy. Light piercing hatred's heart, it said. He knew what it meant, that he was fated to kill Lilith. And when he does, he will be redeemed and he will ascend to the heavens once more. Teleporting back to Yelezna, we then head towards the fortified outpost of Korvala and push north into the shivering wilds where fanatical fallen lie in wait. We then lift off the demon some decidedly useful loot in the bitter cold. A leather doublet, some welcome warmth for the trek ahead. We then find, through the thick snow, the main entrance to Corvalar. Sheathing our weapon to show we're not an enemy, we see the gates are sealed, and a knight on a terrace above demands. State your business. Reverend Mother Prava expects me. Open the gates! Heading through the open gate, we're welcomed by the icy demeanor of the guards, befitting the gale, and are immediately drawn to the warmth of a nearby bonfire and see Vigo, realizing he can take no solace in its warmth, as its fire is for his fallen comrades. You were good soldiers. Worked hard. Fought hard. <laughs> Drank hard too. Brothers. Sisters, I hope you find peace in these flames. Vigo, what are you doing here? So you lived. I came clean to Prava. About taking that woman's bribe. Ugh, it's looking bad. My ass is on the line. Might not have a job when she's done with me. Hey. You're here for her, right? Let's go together. Maybe she'll go easy on me if you're there. Not liking Vigo's odds, acquiesce. Surely a cornerstone of the Holy Order is forgiveness earned through penance. Not many could bear your sins. Coincidentally, a nearby penitent monk scoffs at us. Perhaps Vigo chose the wrong order. We inspect what the monks are working on. Curiously, we see the helmet spike recede deep within the helmet as part of a metal slab that protrudes downward. 
the metal tendrils stretch to the helmet's base and latch onto a studded leather cap, denying any room for a head. We then interrupt the knight to our right, who is no doubt busy measuring our sins, and ask, is that armor? This is no mere armor. This is a holy vessel of the highest craftsmanship. It may uplift the repentant sinner directly to the light. Can armor do that? Uplift. It looks too large to move. Faith rather than flesh moves this suit, though how is only known to a privileged few. The practice has been long abandoned. Something big is coming. Holy war. Mark my words. She wouldn't have asked me to prepare a relic like this otherwise. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. Making our way to the Keep's war room, the guard stops us. Hold. She's expecting us. Vigo. Good luck. Inside, Prava holds counsel. Have the new Watch Commander replace the forces we lost at the mine. So, you've returned. Vigo here tells me you were braver than he. Wasting no time, we explain. I need a divine blessing to chase Lilith. First, you will be made worthy of a blessing. A holy war cannot be won with faithless troops. Make no mistake, this war is holy. Lilith has brought the eternal conflict to Sanctuary, and Inarius will deliver us as writ in prophecy. Until then, we have our parts to play. Make a pilgrimage to the Alabaster Monastery. Cleanse your spirit. Then we may discuss a blessing. Forced to seek the blessing, Vigo says. May as well make myself useful. Come by the ruins, south of here. Dutifully making our way south to the snow-laden ruins, Vigo greets. Hail. And we ask, what must I do for my pilgrimage? There's a shrine west of here. Bears a relic. I'm told it takes on your sin. Weighs you down, body and soul. Beats the hell out of you. It'll cleanse you. Prepare you to stand before the Father. I hope you don't have many regrets, friend. This kind of thing is a lot deadlier for some than others. Watch out, all right? I'll find you at the end. I'll find out. What else can you tell me about the pilgrimage? Nothing good. Lost more than a few worthy soldiers to it. But it'll clean you up for Inarius. Rare honor for an outsider. <laughs> if you can call it that. Wait, you're not coming with me? Ah, uh, no. I'm not ready. Not by a long shot. Even if I could survive the trail, there's no telling what would happen in the end. You, though, you have a solid chance. Do you believe in the Cathedral's prophecy? I had my doubts. The priests were always going on about the return of Lilith. But now she's here. Just like they said. With Vigo's uninspiring words, we trudge through the thick snow down the side of the mountain, making our way west into the fields of judgment. We soon see the bodies of the frozen faithful, no doubt deemed unworthy. Up a slight slope, we locate a dimly lit altar of purity, and an ornate tablet rests at the foot of the steps that reads, Hark, creature of darkness, for you have wandered beyond the reach of the light. Lift your sins, breathe deep the cold air. The path to redemption lies before you, if you have the faith to walk it. Taking the idol of the faithful, we feel the weight of our sins, and our vision grows dim. Sliding down into the fields of judgment, we soon find the next altar, guarded by putrid rot-wielding Khazra, and led by the vile Blight Bringer, who is touched by destruction. 
We ward off their pestilent touch with liberal swaths of our side. We then head up the altar of martyrdom and place the idol atop the altar of penitence. The next ornate tablet to our left then reads, Feel the sting of your wounds. Let the ice into your bones. Welcome your pain. For the agony of the flesh is the first cleansing of the soul. Make your faith stronger than any hurt. Prava is either full of faith or a fully fledged masochist. Taking the heft of the idol on our back once more, we head east and are confronted by a group of undead Khazra, blazing and shambling horrors alike. We see their leader is touched by terror, and we're beginning to sense a theme in these trials. We then place the idol on the altar of inheritance, and our vision grows clear enough for us to find the next tablet. Look around at the mountains towering over you. Feel how small you are. Embrace humility. Accept your place in worship to the Father, for he has shown us the way. Retrieving the idol for a final time, we push east back towards the city. A giant fleshless abomination hefts its axe down on us, touched by hatred. This crazy Khazra stalks us through the snow, and we're unable to stand our ground. Desperate, we make a break for the idol, turning heel to fling shards of bone from its allies in its direction and halt momentarily, hearing only the stinging winds. Wholly relieved, the beast has finally fallen. We then place the idol on the last altar of displacement and read from the tablet at the anointed ascent. The end nears, pilgrim. Look into yourself. Find your faith. Feel how it fills the void within you. Remember, you are nothing without faith. Hold fast to the light. And remember, apparently free from sin, the idol, upon being lifted, no longer burdens us so, and instead emanates a warm light. And so we make our way up the mountain to the Alabaster Monastery and taking in the imposing view of the citadel. We then read the tablet to the left, which imparts. Rejoice your faith. The Father is prophesied to redeem us all. A spear of light piercing hatred's heart. When he ascends to the heavens, he shall lift us with him to the light above. Placing the idol on the elaborate pedestal, we're glad to have survived the trials and to see Vigo praying by the altar to our right. So I like playing cards. Doesn't make me a sinner. But that bribe. Good soldiers died on account of what I did. Is that the kind of man I am? The kind I'll always be. I just... Damn it. I'm praying. Why isn't this working? Oh, you made it. That makes one of us at least. You heard from Prophet? I will, soon. But enough about that. You're about to meet Father Inarius himself. Not everyone comes back, you know. You'd better. I, I owe you a stiff drink. Before meeting the Angel, we ask, what's it like inside the monastery? Not sure, but I've heard crazy rumors. Daft old monk, if the unlucky bastard still lives, Probably as cold in there as it is out here. It'll be ornate, that's for sure. Only the best for the one at the top. Cold, crazy, and conceited? Were we still speaking about the monks or Anarius? 
Vega doesn't bother responding, and we think better of pushing our luck. And so we make our way over the church's seal. Now, post our trials, we have no doubt the red gem represents the impure blood of the church's sinners. We then approach the large stone doors, which eerily swing open as we mount the stairs. Inside the hazy Hall of Ascension, we're addressed by the supposed mad monk. Kneel before him, and remember, you are small, wonderfully small. We then say to the custodian, Brother Orlin, Small? Why must I kneel? No, 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 it's not about kneeling, it's about wonder. Oh, the light itself, divinity itself, radiates from that room. Though my flesh is cold and numb, my spirit is warm with reverence. What can we do but kneel? Tell me, shouldn't Anarius be at Corvala? And so he was, until the sweet poetry of the prophecy rang out to divine its message. He pilgrimaged deep into Sanctuary's heart to meet... Uh, I shouldn't say. To meet who? It pains me to withhold the truth of his light. But I sense it in you, Pilgrim. So I shall tell you. He went to speak with the first of his children, Rathma, the prophecy's true author. He emerged armed with sacred conviction. A holy battle at the center of the prophecy to be won by his blade. He has meditated here for years and years ever since, readying to meet fate Head on. Rathma, hearing Anarius is his father, is still a shock to the system. How do you know so much about Anarius? How do you know the warmth of the sun? The love of your mother? The beauty of a song? His presence is infectious. It takes hold in the soul. We are a void without faith, an empty well. The pious fill their cups with prayer. Mine overflows with his light. So near, so pure. I am changed. I I am nothing. I am better. Isn't it beautiful? It seems Lilith isn't the only being that affects the hearts of men, although on opposite sides of the battle. Both benevolent beings bid payment in blood. Ascending the stairs, we spy lavish artworks and a mural of Anarius atop the world stone. The next image depicts a sick woman who appears to be Prava, being healed by Inarius, who stands arm outstretched by her bedside. A third image shows Inarius floating about an army, apparently rallying the faithful for battle. And as we reach the highest level, we steal our resolve as we step towards a final double door, unsure of what to expect as we enter the portal of Father's Radiance. Forgive this intrusion, but... Tell me what you need. I must traverse the Black Lake. 
And that cannot be done without your blessing. If I've learned anything during my time here, it is that what we're looking for, and what we need, are rarely the same thing. I once thought I could find an end to this war, but there has been no resolution, only more pain. Everything I've done has pulled me further from home, from the place I need to be. This world we made was born from the impossible, and yet, like its creators, it rots from the inside. I... I don't... Lilith has entered the ancient city. With your blessing, I can pursue her. Your kind are weak, and this world has been wasted on the crusades of the unworthy. I can stop her. <laughs> this audience is concluded. Leaving our disappointed father's chambers, we mutter. Back to Corvalar. Unsure of our next move, we think it best to seek out Mother Prava about our failed blessing. On the bright side, we're still among the living. For now, at least, unless Lilith's blood kills us first. As we're about to leave, we stop to speak to Brother Orlan of our failed meeting, saying, Anarius didn't seem very welcoming. No, no, no. You heard him, but you did not listen. His voice is music, a symphony of light. Look beyond the words themselves, and you will find truth. Oh, brother. That's more sycophantic drivel. And with that, we leave for Corvala. Entering as day breaks, and see Prava is mid sermon. Blessed are those who bask in the light. Let our faith be our armor against the encroaching darkness. Approaching her, she sighs in relief. Ah, you've returned. Come, let us speak inside, out of the cold. Bearing the bad news, we admit, Inarius refused to bless me. Yet you stand before me unscathed. I know his ways. That is approval enough for me. In the name of the light, I bless you. May the light flow through you and keep you from corruption and sin. Our victory is prophesied in the heavens. Prophesied? We wonder why has he taken Rathma's teachings for his own and ask, what does the prophecy say? From the Father's voice to my ears, a spear of light piercing hatred's heart. First Lilith, then the Primes. He will deliver us from the eternal conflict. Your commander attempted to regain Renarius's favor. What will become of Vigo? Vigo and I had a good conversation when he returned. He will do his penance. Trust that he is in good hands. Why is Anarius here on Sanctuary? Penitence. In the Heaven's eyes, creating humanity was a sin. They cast him down. Now he seeks redemption and the chance to go home. As prophesied, slaying Lilith is that chance. When he ascends, so shall we all. With our unexpected blessing, there's one piece of the puzzle left, and we head back to Yelesna to find Nairel in the Mistral Woods. <laughs>